for board of select. Sorry about that, Amanda. Uh, we're going to call to order the town of Andover Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday, December 13th, 2021. Uh, and we are going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, hey Santa, you joined us, very nice. So let's get started with public speak. Uh, we will start with Kurt Dowling. Okay, we'll move on to Joanne oh, Ebert. I'll set you. Okay, Kurt, thank you. Oh, all set. Okay, Louise Goodwin. All set, thanks. Diane Choquette. Okay. All set, uh, thanks. Thank you. Uh, S. Fern. Okay, and Jerry Wright. I'm here. Anything to say, Jerry, you want to join us? No? Well, I, oh, I said, are ready for me? Okay. I sent the paperwork cool. off to all these selectmen, including yourself, uh, Jeff, and uh, did anybody have any questions on what I sent? I, I tried to update everything we're doing in the park and we're probably out of stand still now until spring. And I did check with the monument people out in Minnesota, and he has put the, uh, the battlefield cross has been casted, and they're going to hold off welding it until they get a confirmed date when the black granite will be available. And he thinks it's probably more towards the spring, which is fine with me. Was looking forward to going out to Minnesota in the uh, end of February. So if it's not until March or April, that'd be fine. And I'll update you as I as I get it. Thank you very much. And uh, Kathy and Mike Blasi. Yes, I have a couple things this evening. Um, I wanted to let you know that on Friday, uh, this past Friday, we had the children at the at the um, the senior at the AES school and the for lunch, um, and that the kids from the sixth grade waited on us. It was really a great fun day. And um, what happened was we took photos and of course the principal was there and he had okayed it. We wanted to put that information, the photos into the River East this past Friday. Well, I ended up, I wrote a letter, but I, they did not allow us to put in an article or a, a picture because I would not give them the na last name of the children, which is the rule of the AES uh, officials, the principal and the uh, superintendent, that they do not give out their last names for children. So I was disappointed, but they they had the letter, so I hope the kids saw it. Um, and also, I wanted to let you know that the seniors uh, went uh, last Thursday to Rental Field to see the lights. They enjoyed it very much. Great, great fun. We only had to take one bus. And um, we're joining with the local senior center centers and closing uh, our some of our senior activities until the new year, just to keep ourselves safe. Because there, uh, they, I think you all know we're on an uprise here, and and um, I I want to just feel that we're safe. I think we all want to feel that way. We would like to be together. We would like to do things, and um, and we're still just feeling a little uncomfortable with the in increase that we have in Andover right now. Um, also, the bus drivers will be delivering turkeys and hams to our seniors on Friday. So that didn't change and they'll be delivering uh, food pantry and food chair next week. So they'll, they'll have everything they need. And um, the grant that I put in in the summer for the bus, for a new bus has been approved by the Connecticut DOT. And uh, we will be receiving that in May of 2022. 
Uh, I forwarded paperwork today to uh, Eric to sign off on. And um, I wanted to thank Jay Tuttle, uh, he, who contacted the right people to check out our three fire extinguishers, which was due for December. And um, the three are working. Well, two were working, one was not. The one they replaced, he said, was a little bit bigger than the housing that we need to have. So they ordered the right size and, and we will get that replaced. But there's one now, there's another one there on a loaner basis. So we're in good shape for that. And um, also the maintenance on the 2017 bus uh, needed new tires so um, and winterizing. So that's been done. I did not put it in my monthly report because it happened after the fact. And that's it. Okay. Mike, you got anything? No. Okay. <laughs> all right. I think we're uh, all good on public speak. So uh, additions and deletions to the agenda. Anyone? Okay. Hearing none, uh, let's move on to item four, assessor's report by John Chaponis. Status of the revaluation and overall trends in the grand list. John? Good evening, can you guys hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay, great. I'm gonna begin by providing a little overview and background information on the entire project and then wrap it up with uh, where we are today. Andover released our RFP, a request for proposals for the 2021 townwide revaluation nearly two years ago in January of 2020. In February of 2020, the town awarded the bid to uh, Vision Government Solutions Incorporated, who I will refer to as Vision from this point on. There are only a handful of companies that are certified to perform revaluations in Connecticut, and Vision is one of the premier companies having performed hundreds of revaluations throughout New England and as far south as Virginia in just the last decade. Uh, Vision's also intimately familiar with Andover having completed our last five revaluations, including this one. Andover this time around was incredibly fortunate uh, as we were awarded senior staffing on this project. I was very pleased to get Stephen Ferreira, who I've known for more than three decades as my project manager. Steve is on the line with us tonight. Uh, Steve began his career for 10 years as a residential and commercial fee appraisal appraiser. And for the last 38 years, he's served as the Eastern New England district manager for vision. As you can imagine, 48 years in the business provides incredible knowledge and experience. And uh, Steve has been accepted to testify in court as an expert witness in the state of Massachusetts, Rhode Island. He's obtained his revaluation certificate, supervisor certification from the state of Connecticut and has completed revaluations for some of the most challenging communities, including Block Island, Martha's Vineyard and several municipalities on Cape Cod. I worked hand in hand with Steve on this project as we drove down every street and drove down every long driveway and setting the final values on all parcels. Uh, Mimi Mackey performed much of our data entry and sales research. Mimi is a state certified appraiser who began her career in 1989 as a residential staff appraiser working directly for banks and fleet mortgage. In 2008, she went to work for Vision where she currently serves as a project manager. Uh, Andover was extremely lucky as it's highly unusual to have two project managers working firsthand on one project. Uh, lastly, rounding out our staff was Jim Williams, who performed all of our commercial appraisals. Jim began his career in 94 working in appraisal and assessment field in Arkansas, later moved to Connecticut and began working in the municipal revaluation field here in 2000. He worked his way up to senior commercial appraiser and has been in that position for the last 12 years. It's almost hard to believe, but these three employees assigned to my project in Andover this year have just shy of 100 years experience in appraisal and municipal revaluations amongst them. Uh, moving back to our project, as the Board of Selectmen knows, right out of the gate, just after we signed the contract, we ran into issues with the full inspection process due to the onset of COVID-19. In October of 2020, the town modified the existing contract with an amendment that dealt with uh, putting okay. off the full yes. inspections. And moving you might post your CV on this website, LI for sure. In October of 2020, the town modified the existing contract with an amendment that dealt with putting off the full interior inspections and moving forward with a full exterior inspection. 
Those exterior, exterior inspections were completed between the fall of 2000 and February of 2021. In March, in April of 2021, a call back letter was sent out to all property owners requesting the opportunity to inspect the interior of the, their property if they were so willing. Those, those that were willing had the interiors of their property inspected. In August of 2021, sales review was completed by Steve and myself. From September through October, final field review was completed by Steve Ferrer and myself. And from September to November, data entry in the final valuation phase was completed. Jim Williams began commercial valuation in early June of 2021 with sales analysis and exterior inspections. Commercial field review was completed by the end of July of 2021, as well as the review of all income and expense reports that had been filed by commercial property owners over the last five years. The commercial valuation process was completed from August till September, with final values being completed on September 28th, 2021. The real estate grand list grew by 13.7% overall, residentials up 15%, and commercial was up 6%. And further breaking down the residential, waterfront went up 43%, whereas non-waterfront increased by 11%. This brings us to the final phase of the project. Impact notices for all properties were mailed out on November 22nd, 2021, and the informal hearing schedule was created. Informal hearings were offered both live in person and telehearings over the telephone. In-person in meetings were scheduled in the meeting room at Town Hall with mandatory masks being required. Our residents were split 50-50 as to which platform they preferred with almost exactly half requesting telehearings over the phone. Historically in the past, only 5% would uh, request telehearings. A total of 53 property owners participated in the informal hearing process, which was completed last week. Uh, after it was completed, we received, I believe, four or five telephone calls from people who got notices late because they might have been um, in Florida or had pro uh, an issue with the mail. We're arranging for those people to, to get an opportunity to have an informal hearing. During the next two to three weeks, the properties who came in for informal hearings or raised specific concerns will be researched and or scheduled for full interior inspections. I think we have eight inspections taking place on Thursday of this week, and um, some more will take place over the next couple of weeks. Um, once all the research and inspections have been completed, any changes uh, that will be made will be data entered by vision. And then the second final notices containing the informal hearing results will be mailed in mid to late January. After which any property, property owners who feel aggrieved by the assessment process have the legal right to file an appeal with the Board of Assessment Appeals no later than January 20th, 2022. Applications for the BAA can be found on the town website on the BAA homepage. The reevaluation only consists of the real estate portion of the grand list. While real estate has increased 13.7% overall since last year, our office is still working on valuing the motor vehicle grand list that was just received from the Department of Motor Vehicles last week. Additionally, we're still reviewing, reconciling, and performing the data entry on all of our personal property declarations as well. Once we have finalized the personal property and motor vehicle valuations, we can determine what the overall increase to the 2021 grand list turns out to be. At this point, it's still our goal to certify the grand list by the end of January and not require an extension. Once the grand list is 100% completed, I send out a memo to the town administrator and copy the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Finance. Um, you also asked about overall trends in the grand list and it is being reported across the state of Connecticut that all towns are seeing increase, increased in, increases in motor vehicle valuation on used cars. I think we've all seen uh, what's taking place with the price of new cars and used cars, and they are going up. So we certainly expect the motor vehicle portion of the grand list uh, to grow as well. As mentioned earlier, Steve Ferrara is on uh, the call with us, and I just would love to give him the floor for two, two minutes just to chime in and say hello. Steve, are you with us? You have to unmute yourself. 
or does he have to be unmuted by the administrator there? All right, thank you. To oh, there he is. Yep, I'm here. Um, uh, good evening, everyone. Um, what I'd like to do is just give you kind of a brief overview of the uh, of, of the numbers that we work with, because a revaluation, a mass appraisal revaluation, is 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 tested by statistics. Um, we do the statistics uh, based on what the International Association of Assessing Offices uh, recommend, and we do statistics. Uh, that the Office of Policy and Management with the State of Connecticut requires us to do. Um, <clears throat> first of all, there were about 53 sales of single family homes in Andover. And uh, that represents about 4.2% of the, of the actual homes in town. <clears throat> and uh, that's a historically high number. Uh, typically we would see it somewhere in the two to 3% range uh, in a year that was uh, as less vibrant as this one is in the in the real estate field, and and when we measure the validity of a revaluation, uh, as I said, we use statistics, and one of the major statistics we use is the median um, uh, ratio or or median value, and uh, the median is the middle ground between the highest and lowest uh, of any data that we're analyzing, and and for this town, the median ratio, and that ratio is the selling price versus our opinion of market value, our median is 95% of, of that market value. And that's typically where we try to be so that um, we're not strictly right at 100% because that 100% number tends to push too many properties over the, uh, over the selling price. Another thing to, to understand is the median is good at 95%. We're supposed to be between 90 and 110 uh, statistically. And another statistic that we use is the coefficient of dispersion. It's a big word. Uh, what it really measures is how well the 53 sales hover around that median. And that's what you want them to do. You want them to be consistent in, in their level of assessment. Um, and, and our uh, coefficient of, vari of, of dispersion was about under 5%. Um, typically we have to be under 15. So again, we, we met the criteria of both the IAAO and OPM. The median selling price uh, for a single family home during this past 12 month period was $280,000. Um, so that's a benchmark for your average or typical home in Andover. Uh, when we look at the lake, there were four sales on the lake um, and the median selling price there was $650,000. Um, the low was 432 and the high was 962,000. Um, and, and this is typical of what we see in, in waterfront communities. Uh, the waterfront typically goes up faster than the, than the remaining part of the town. Uh, I've seen that along the shore in Connecticut. I've seen it in the Rhode Island shore and in Massachusetts. Um, I think uh, John has already told you about the hearing process. So um, if there's any questions for me, I'd be glad to answer them right now. You said there were 53 sales. From what period did you pull from? Was it all of 2020, 2021? What did we pull? It, it's uh, October 1 of uh, 20 to October 1 of 2021. And that's a requirement, again, of OPM to use the uh, that 12 month preceding <laughs> period up to the date of valuation. Anyone else? Okay. Um, Go ahead. I was gonna ask, so, so you're saying that it's it's typical to see these types of changes in lakefront communities. Um, is it? I mean, it seems like the rest of the town also went up a little bit. Certainly not what the lake did, but um, are you saying it's typical in this particular year or in this particular the last couple of revals in general, or are you talking about just in this moment in time? Uh, I would say it's historically typical for waterfront properties to go up at a higher rate than um, 
than uh, properties without that amenity. And, and I, it's right. really just a, a function of supply and demand. The demand is greater than the supply and therefore uh, the price is driven up higher than it would be for your normal residential property. Okay. Now, John, was is the, the trend wasn't our last reveal. The trend was actually that we, we went down slightly on grand list. Isn't that correct? I apologize. I don't have a, a ton of data on the last reveil. I do recall the overall residential grand list going down 3.7%, but I wouldn't be surprised if we were to isolate the waterfront and find that it actually went up. Um, okay. Because like Steve stated, typically uh, the what I wouldn't say just I wouldn't say the lake, even though it's a lake in Andover, but in other communities when there is waterfront versus non waterfront, it does increase at a rate that's greater than the rest of the town or in a declining market, it declines at a lesser rate if it declines at all. Okay. Oh, it definitely declined in the last reveal. So um, well, listen, my, my biggest problem with all of this is, you know, I have been uh, very, I've been trying to understand exactly how the entire reval impacts everyone and does it do it fairly. And that is my biggest issue. And my biggest question to you, John, my biggest question to you, Steve, is how do we provide that information to the residents so that they can understand that it's been done fairly <clears throat> well in in terms of uh a revaluation uh, the law requires us to value properties at their market value or in connecticut at 70 percent of their market value so from an assessing point of view we have a, a strict formula that we have to use in order to do that in in getting the public to understand the process, um, I, I think the best way to do it is to give them access to all the data that we use. And, and that is on the website, the vision website, both uh, uh, all the data for all the values uh, of anyone in the town, plus they can do sales searches and, and look at properties that have sold in order to uh, determine whether their property is consistent with some of those properties or whether they feel it's inconsistent. And, and typically that's what we tell people. There's essentially three ways to uh, uh, determine whether your property's valued properly or not. And one is if you have an, uh, another opinion of market value, because what we've given you is an opinion of value. So maybe you've had a, a mortgage appraisal or you've had uh, some other issue to get your property appraised, you have that data, we would review that. Uh, a, a second way is, is to look at the sales of properties in your area and, and compare them to yourself and, um, and, and see whether you feel that your property is accurately represented. And the third way is to just, even if you don't have any sales data, compare your property to a similar property in order to ensure that similar properties are paying a similar share of the tax burden. Um, Steve, I, I understand that. And you know, I don't, I don't really even question my, my valuation on my property, let's say, and I live on the lake. What I'm having difficulty, and I've had difficulty over the last couple of revals, is trying to understand how all of the other areas of the town, uh, you know, if all the boats are floating in a direction that is similar, then we're all paying our fair share. And that's really the whole issue. I, I, I do not, and I have not, and I, I, you know, I can evaluate my property easily. It's not, that's not the question I'm really asking. How do I evaluate the entire reval? How can, how can someone evaluate the entire reval? Steve, well, if the, I may, Steve, if ahead, I may. Sure. I mean, well, there's three ways, there's three approaches to value. There's, there's the cost approach, there's the sales approach, and there's the the income approach. Um, what, what we do when we do a municipal revaluation is called a market driven cost approach. So we take our costs from the market. The first thing we do is we go out and look at the properties that are selling. 
and we work our model until it values those properties accurately. Then we use our model in the rest of the town. The other thing that we did was we went out and we looked at every, every parcel and um, we did those uh, full exterior inspections and we made sure that we knew exactly what everybody has because things do change over a five year period. I can't tell you how many times we pulled up to a house and saw new roof, new windows, new sidings, shutters, gutters, doors, garage doors, the, the works and, and the condition of the property you know, has been improved. So now we're comparing it to sales of properties that were more improved versus ones that, that weren't. That's all part of what we do. The Board of Selectmen empowers me and my office to make these decisions. Then I make them and I defend them against the individual property owners. All of our information is open to the public, more so than any other you know, municipal department because it goes back to the Boston Tea Party and, and fair taxation and everything being open. We put all of our stuff on the internet. People can sit at home and look at it all and they can make those comparisons. And you know, this is my fourth revaluation being implemented for the town of Andover. And, and in the last 20 years, we've only had five appeals even taken to Superior Court of which we gave back a total of less than $30,000 in assessment, which is less than $1,000 in taxes on a $9 million uh, uh, local taxation that we raised. You're talking about one one hundredth of one percent, and I think you know the, the history speaks for itself. This is what we do, and this is why you know the town of Andover pays my salary and pays this company. I think the board of selectmen has to have a little faith in the process. Again, I'll ask the same question: How do I evaluate it? You just told me to just trust you. I didn't say to just trust me, but it's That's not my job. Said. I didn't say that. I said, it's not, I, I'm saying now, it's not my job to teach the Board of Selectmen or any individual how to do my job. It's my job to place a value on the property. After which the law says, if you are, are aggrieved with the assessment process, you file an appeal. There is an appeal. It's called the Board of Assessment Appeals, not the Board of Selectmen. The appeal goes to the Board of Assessment Appeals. The Board of Selectmen are specifically removed from this process intentionally in order to have a fair application of the local property tax. So, uh, so okay. who, said, who said the Board of Selectmen wanted anything to do with that? All I, I, think, all I asked again was how do we evaluate the revaluation so that everyone is treated fairly? Because everything that I've, been, I've heard has been on an individual property by property basis. I'm asking in a global sense how to do it. So you're basically saying, John, get all of the data and do your own work. Well, let's back up a second. I think to be fair, if we had listened to the whole presentation, I think John and Steve both pointed out that they had to have a, a certain time frame for the number of sales, for when the sales that they would use for, um, for the reval was. So they said, you know, it was, it was 2020 through 2021. They had four comp sales on the lake and 53 comp sales overall. That's that's your basis. They're following a state guideline. If they've done that correctly, which you know they're telling us they have, we've hired them to do it. They're certified to do it. If they go to court and lose dramatically, which John says they haven't in the past, they've given them back thirty thousand over four revals, thirty thousand dollars of assessment not dollars, but $30,000 in total assessment. So, I mean, we hired them, they're certified. It sounds like they're telling us they've done their due diligence. So I, I, asking I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not, I'm not, Adrian, I am not questioning they haven't done their due diligence. They asked a simple question. How do we determine that it's fair and equitable across everything? Not just an individual house. I'm not questioning your house. Or my house. I'm just asking, in a global sense, how do we how do we show our residents that it's fair and equitable? Well, if I can, the only way to to judge a uh, mass appraisal is to look at the statistics. That's what the Office of Policy and Management does. That's what the International Association of Assessing Offices recommend. So it is a, a technical approach. A uh, non-technical person, what they could do is look at those sales, look at those 53 sales, compare 
the selling price to what we have put down as a proposed market value and judge for yourself, does that represent the property the way we think it does? Um, we know that statistics works because that's what we that's what we do uh, uh, on a regular basis in order to uh, to set up the model that values the town. Uh, for a non lay uh, a non technical approach, you could just look at those properties and look at the values that we put on them, and then you just do a, a sample comparison. Uh, we we valued X property at three hundred thousand. There are three other properties on that street that are similar. What did we put on those? And and you're talking about thousands of properties, so it, it is something that takes some time. That's why it takes time to do a reval, and um, there's really no other approach that I can think of. Another great another great test is properties that will sell over the next three or four months. You know, in comparison to where we valued them, that's something that you can look at. But other than the statistics, and you have to meet those statistics in order to to, to certify the reval with the state of Connecticut. Uh, they they allow for a certain corridor of error, and we're we're like one third of the way down that corridor of error, which means, that data is, which means that our data is very tight. So Sorry. you're saying that you're saying that OPM takes a look at this. You have to file uh, the you have to file and certify the performance based revaluation standards, and they look at all our sales and our assessments, and and they review that data. That was the coefficient of dispersion that Steve was talking about before and said we were at five when most towns can barely come in under 10. Um, so, you know, I, I think it's very good. And while there were only four sales that took place on the lake in the last 12 months or the sales testing period, there were 15 sales that took place over the last three years. And they showed, you know, an escalating, uh, you know, sale price that was, that was going up over time. And I think Anybody who was watching the real estate market in the last couple of years saw the prices going up on their own street. And, uh, you know, our, our only goal is for fair taxation. We're, we're not on commission. We don't make any more by having assessments be higher or lower. Our last grand list, the grand list went down. Our only goal is to analyze the data and, and to promote and administer a fair application of the local property tax. And frankly, we're the ones who are qualified to do that. No, I just I just wanted to point out and say I'm I appreciate this conversation because I'm going to get questions that maybe, you know, Jeff asked earlier, and then I can now answer these questions better. So we're just asking these questions so that when people come up to us and ask us, we, we know how to answer that. So this is helpful. Thank you. Um, the, the comment you made, Steve, about looking at the sales that you guys used, are those available somewhere for people to look at a, as a reference point? Oh, yes. They're, they're in the assessor's office. And like I said, our website does allow a sales search. Um, so if someone, say, had a ranch house, they could use the sales search and look at all the ranches that sold in a certain time period. Uh, okay. so the data is available both you know, in a hard copy in the assessor's office and online. Okay. Can we post those 53 sales on the website, please? We have all those sales because we did Which them ourselves. Went up to? I don't care. I mean, we're 442. He's 500,000. Excuse me? I'm sorry. I missed, I missed that conversation. It was over. Jeff? Okay. So can John... He... John, can you ask, uh, can you give the information to Amanda so Amanda can post those 53 sales that are the basis for this reval? It will assist the residents who are, who are concerned about their numbers. And you know, get out of here. I'm on a meeting. It will. Uh, uh, when do I get a chance to say something? Do I interrupt? No, excuse me. Excuse me. I didn't do the that. Board, of, board of Selectmen meeting. Amanda, can you mute Martina? Amanda, Amanda dropped off. So unfortunately, the host got passed to John. John, can you pass me the host, please? What's the host? They're going to mute you. Why? Yeah. Um. If you're not a, if you're not on the board of selectmen, can you just um? I realize. Listen, I realize residents have a lot of questions and concerns about this. 
this is not the exact forum for any any conversation like this. The only people supposed to be talking are the Board of Selectmen and individuals who the Board of Selectmen is allowing to speak. All the residents who spoke previous to this spoke during public speak. At the end of our meeting, there's another public speak that residents can talk during that issue, uh, during that time. So I would appreciate, so John Chaponis, have you transferred the, the host yeah. responsibilities? Oh, I didn't realize I had the host. How do I transfer it? So John, it got it got passed to you because Amanda got bumped off the call. So if you look at, are you on a are you on a computer right now? Are you using your computer? Yep. So, so if you look at, if you look at my my picture, there's like three bubbles of when you put your mouse over my picture, and then you say, um, just click on it and pass. The, it'll say something about give the host opportunity or pass the host. John, John gets to be the genie host. <laughs> John is the host. Perfect. Paula, did that work? Hey, Paul's the yeah. host. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, the, so the answer uh, the answer is yes. We can we can put the we can give the sales to Amanda and she can post them on the town website. That's not a problem. That would be perfect. And then, um, and I'm assuming I'm assuming one second. I'm assuming since uh, there are a lot of questions uh, related to this, any information, John, that you can post to minimize, uh, you know, the residents who who have a problem with the reval, uh, that would be great because all of the information is supposed to be public, and as opposed to have all these people have to dig for everything, uh, whatever the assessor's office can post would be. Uh, would be greatly appreciated. It would minimize the calls and the concerns that that we as uh, selectmen may be getting, and that we we uh, we need to have the information made available. So I appreciate if all of that information would get posted up online. And Eric and Amanda, if you can facilitate that, that would help. Uh, yeah, that would help greatly. I'm I'm going to suggest also a link to the vision website. So if we can put that there too, I'll, I'll talk to Amanda at another time. Isn't there, isn't there currently one already on the assessor's page? I believe there is. There is, there is okay. yeah. And we also, I also in, in leading up to this asked Amanda to put out a, um, uh, our, a link to our, our you know, mill rate and previous mill rates so that people could have that information as well um, on the appropriate pages. Um, I think the, I, I got three things. I think the first thing is that people need to understand that because your taxes went up X percent or your, your evaluation went up, your, your reval went up or down a certain percentage, that doesn't mean your taxes are going to go up that same percentage or down that same percentage. It's going to depend on what the budget comes out at. And if the whole town went up a certain percentage, then, you know, then your taxes may not move at all. Um, I think people need to understand that first and foremost, but I do have two questions. Um, John, I know that people were hearing previously that if they didn't call in by the, the date, you know, if they got their notices late and they hadn't called in by the date that they had to wait until um, February. I know I was, I was kind of in that same boat. I, I got a late thing. I thought we had to wait until the board of assessment appeals. I didn't realize there was a, there was a running list for people to talk to vision. Absolutely. Um, I mean, you want to do your hearings right away for a bunch of reasons. You want to have an opportunity to inspect properties that require a reinspection, and you want to have time to research whatever issues they bring. Plus, uh, we, you know, we've come to learn that if you give people six weeks, a lot of times they'll wait five weeks before they do anything. But we're not no, going to I... shut anybody down who comes in um, late and still has questions. Uh, getting getting them tell telehearings is no problem whatsoever. There's actually four being done tomorrow, so okay. we are still uh, talking to those people. And you know, I mean, Adrian, I've known you for a lot of years. Anybody can come to to talk to me at any time, even after their informal hearing, even after the BAA. And okay. you know, the the biggest thing is some of these properties. Uh, you know, it's tough when you didn't get into them. Um, yeah. We actually did get into to 311 out of about um, you know 1,200 uh, residential parcels. So you know that that was pretty Im impressive. We visited all of them, but quite a few people were willing to let us in. And another, we took information at the door from another 484. 
So um, I have to say, Andover residents were incredibly um, cooperative throughout this whole process. I think we really only had one uh, sort of negative incident and it was because someone had a restraining order against someone else and, and didn't hear the doorbell being rung and, and, and our guy ended up in the backyard and they, and they saw him. But other than that one, um, the process really went very smoothly. And, um, you know, I have to thank all of our Andover residents for that. So, so the, the only other question I have is if someone comes, so the process basically is if someone has questions, they come to, you know, you guys now or, or hopefully already. And then if they still have questions, they can go to the Board of Assessment Appeals. If they go to the Board of Assessment Appeals and their number goes down or up or whatever, um, they have a chance to appeal that again to court. Is that correct? And my, and my, my the second part of that question is, does the town have a chance to appeal that? So like, let's say somebody goes into the Board of Assessment Appeals and it gets lowered dramatically. Do we have a chance to, can we appeal that if the town disagrees with the, with a major reduction? And can they, can they appeal it if they, if they disagree with the fact that there wasn't a major reduction? Okay, so it's kind of got two questions there. So the first one is, after you go to the Board of Assessment Appeals, regardless of what happens, and we should say that the Board of Assessment Appeals has the power to increase, decrease, or not change. So after you go to the Board of Assessment Appeals, you have the right to go to Superior Court. Now, when I worked for the city of Jersey City in New Jersey, we did, have, we did go to court and have a property increased. I've never asked for an increase in Connecticut, um, you know, because I never went to court on a property that was that undervalued. But I, I honestly don't know the answer. I'd probably have to research it. But the assessor can increase any property the following year that they feel is undervalued. So there, there's, you know, at, at the end of the day, my job is for fair taxation. So I have had situations where I've gone out and someone says, I got rid of the pool and it's a raised ranch. And then you see that there's a patio and a finished basement in, in the bottom of the raised ranch in Central Air, things that we didn't have. I, I can't go out there with blinders and it's my job and my duty to discover list and value and, and add anything that changes value. So while that's always a possibility, it's on the rarer side that, you know, we go out and we look at a property and it, and it increases, but it, but it does happen. Thank you. Uh, John, one quick question. You said that you uh, had that many in-home inspections and there was another 900 that were not. I'm assuming that you did exterior walks around the ones that you didn't get inside? Sure. There were exterior walks done around every parcel in town. Um, so they all, you know, had, well, I should say, except for those who, there were 77 uh, properties that, uh, you know, instructed our guys to leave. And there were 18 that were gated or no trespassing in which the vendor will not enter onto the property. So other than those, they did go on and measure the exterior of every single property, check the outbuildings, make sure we had the right number of outbuildings, the right size, et cetera. But they did end up getting into 311 and um, took data from the front door with, with, with uh, property owners from 484. So um, really, you know, statistically, that's, that's, that's pretty good numbers and really good cooperation in the middle of a worldwide pandemic. Okay, so if you measured the exterior and checked the outbuildings, if there were adjustments that needed to be made, but made to the card, they were made there and then, or what's the status? The card gets marked up by the data collector. The data entry is done by someone different. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, thank you very much for all that information. Anybody else have any questions? Jeff, Scott? Just a quick question for John. Um, I noticed there was one er minor error on my line card and I sent you an email about it this evening. Is that just something that doesn't require a walkthrough or anything? That's just something that can be dealt with internally, correct? That's correct. I mean, if people came for informal hearings and said, you know, you have me down for three full baths and I have two half, two full baths and one half bath, those are the kind of changes that we, we just make. So if you shot me something, we'll take care of it. Yeah, that would, that's actually the issue. I'm, I have it, on my card, I have two half bathrooms and I only have one. I got three and a half. I got two and a half. <laughs> so what That's about Santa being naughty? No, it's just just so people know they don't have to go through. If it's just a small error like that, they could just send you an email, correct? Can the public see? No. Okay, Scott. All set, Jeff. 
right? Uh, just to let the public know the, the process um, is to, and John, just so you can verify this, is uh, there's vision meetings that uh, can occur, and then it's the Board of Assessment Appeal, and then from the Board of Assessment Appeal, if it is not uh, done correctly for the resident, they can sit there and file a suit in state court related to their assessment. Accurate? That is correct. And that's on our website, right underneath our current revaluation uh, update. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Thank All you right. for taking the time, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. All right. See you Thank later. you. Okay. So we're going to move on now to uh, item five, boards and commission presentations. Uh, I do not believe we have any. We're going to move on to item six, uh, the Memorial Day Committee appointments and the assistant town clerk, Barbara, um, I guess I'm going to say Gucho. Anybody want to correct that pronunciation, please? I'm not even going to try it. Amanda? Sounds good. Good show. The show. Okay, that's close. That's close. Thanks. All right. Um, so, uh, do we have any appointments for Memorial Day Committee? I did not see any. Am I missing that? Anybody? <laughs> there aren't any. It's still on our list to help find this. some members. Okay. All right. Um, one second, please. Is Eric? Are you gonna are you gonna update um, for the community center committee during your thing or? or Jeff, uh, I was not planning on doing that update since you were both at the meeting. Well, what about the other three and the public? <laughs> okay, so. So we have nothing boards and commissions is what I'm being told. So do we need to make a motion to uh, appoint Barbara? Nope, she's Gucci? hired. She's hired. Um, really? She's been working, Jeff. Well, I know she's been working, but I thought the board of selectmen had to approve those types of things. Nope, actually, uh, that is Carol's, Carol, Carol Carol's gets, discretion. Carol gets to select the individual. Yes, she does. Yeah, who approves it? Carol. <laughs> you can't. You, no, Carol selects them again. This is technical, but not technical. All right, it well, would have been nice if the Board of Selectmen was informed before that person got hired that, you know, it, that's that's the role. I mean, it's the role of the Board of Selectmen, right? But what are you going to do? I mean, the state statute doesn't it's not, allow you. It's not what I'm going to do. It's it, Jeff says this all the time. Is it done right and in accordance with the rules or it's not done right? The, the, the state rules. statute says that she gets to hire. I didn't, I didn't sit there and say she didn't get to select that individual. Oh. I asked the question, who hired, who approves employees? Don't make if, we're gonna, if we're going to complain about other things done, then <laughs> may as well complain about this one. You're making me bring out the Grinch gloves, Jeff. You really are. All right, so I make a motion that we approve Barbara Goshi as the assistant town clerk. I'll second that. Okay, further discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All those that abstain? Abstain, because not yes. necessary. Wear your Grinch gloves. Uh, again, do it according to the way it's supposed <laughs> to be done, and people can't complain. That's would, what the state statute's for. Right? I would, I would have thought that we all could have got a text at least. Yeah. But again, yeah. it's it's not up to us. It's up to Carol Lee. Again, Adrian, you're missing the point. I, I don't think I am. Because if you say no, what are you going to do? Say no, you're not going to appoint her? She still gets to hire her. She gets to pick her own clerk. We don't have a say. It's and pretty actually, cut and dry. That one, that one, you know, I'm going to research that one. I wonder if that is true. So... I wonder if we said no, would she have to go back out and redo it? <laughs> so, yes, she would give you the same name again. All right. You know, I mean, so I so, asked that question to Dennis um, as a town's attorney. 
Dennis, you- Dennis basically said she gets to choose her assistant. Um, that's her, her right and role. Okay. All right. Uh, resignations. We have none. Uh, town administrative report. Eric is sick. He's not been feeling well. He will have a very short town administrator's report. Okay. I don't really have any updates to the report that is online. So um, do you all have any questions for me of that report? You know, I went over it and I thought maybe, you know, the big culvert that's on, we're going to be getting a billion dollars. And I think that shovel ready projects are probably going to be the ones that are going to be chosen for that money. And maybe if we did the engineering on that Bazola culvert, that we could possibly get, get that done. That is a very, very good point, Scott. What do you think about that, Eric? Uh, so you want to hire an engineering firm to do the survey oh. and site design for that? Just, is that what you just brand, Just get Brandon and start the engineering process on that big one. Well, that one's, in truth, Brandon's already said beyond what he's willing what he has the time, uh, you know, and capabilities to design. So what we would plan on doing the same thing we're starting to do now, which is go to RFP for an engineering firm to for the do design, the design for that. Yep. Okay. Um, well, go yep. ahead and do that, but there's probably four other culverts in town that Brandon can do the work on. <clears throat> Brandon can do some of them, yes. Okay. So let's actually do that with Bazola Road. That's a very good idea, Scott, because that one is going to take uh, a lot of money, some, some significant adjustments to uh, so, deal with that that brook that's running through into the into the lake. Just to ask a, a a structural question here, as far as timing, is there any limitation on design phase to actually doing the work? Because I know we're we're hoping we get a grant, but if we don't. Is that design work valid for a certain amount of time or is it, you know, is there? A, well, is there... I think we'd be okay if we started the design now because the overriding agency that controls this is the Army Corps of Engineers mm-hmm. because Basola has more than one square mile of drainage running into it. Okay. Um, therefore, it's an Army Corps of Engineers review. And they are just updating their standards now. Um, what about on the smaller ones then? Uh, the smaller ones, it's kind of case by case, which one qualifies and which one, you know, what approval process occurs for each bridge. It's, it's the size of the stream, I think. And <laughs> I, meant, I meant as far as the same question, is there an overriding agency issue for any of those? Uh, the one on, uh, Hutchinson road, that's also army Corps of engineer approval. Um, I don't know. I'm sure when we get to the one on Juravati, that one will be army Corps of engineer approval. Um, I don't know on all of them. I haven't looked at all of them. Okay. I suspect most of them actually are big enough. Certainly the one on Bear Swamp would be also. Okay. So do we do we bid them out piecemeal or do we or do we have Brandon do the smaller ones and you know? Well, I mean, in truth, my plan was basically as we get money in the kitty, we've already started the design phase for the one on Hutchinson. Um, and we're probably close. To having enough money in our account now, uh, our bridge and culvert fund to deal with the first one, um, you know, which means if we went to construction sometime at the end of next summer and we put additional money into the fund in the next cycle, we could get one done. And then my plan had been to, to address them as we get, as the fund has enough money to do individual culverts. Okay. Um, Okay, so Eric, it, it would it would probably be in our best interest to find out which ones of these culverts that Brandon Brandon can actually uh, assist with, 
and then which ones he can't. And then we can, you can come back to us at the next meeting and we can decide, you know, what we do with the other ones because he should just, you should just be utilizing his time to sit there and, and do that as much as possible. Exactly. <coughs> Get the engineering work done on all of them. Yep. Yeah. We should attempt to try to have them all lined up if we can. We probably won't get enough money to do that, but in reality, the town is probably going to <coughs> end up having to pick up some of these culverts out of our just our general fund. You know, we're going to have to pay for these because you're going to have something break eventually. Well, most of these culverts are big enough that we're eligible for. Uh, the 50% state funding. Mm -hmm. um, the only problem with doing it through the state program is there's enough additional, I would say, aggravation that it drives the cost of the project up. And basically what Brandon has said is that any culvert you can do for under about a quarter of a million dollars, um, it's cheaper to self-fund than to try to get state money by the time you bump up all the requirements that the state requires. Okay. All right. Uh, in in your uh, well, I believe it's actually under new business, so I'll leave it. For that. <coughs> Does anyone else have any questions for Eric before he has any other? Under Eric, under the transfer station, um, we said we got a quote for the replacement of the old cart structure. Um, we were talking about using the other building. I thought. Correct. So I had asked. Jay to get me a couple quotes for replacing the overhead door. I just don't have that information to present to you yet. Okay. I'll get it to you as soon as I have it. Um, couple of questions, Eric. Um, you did some work on the rail trail. Is that right? Uh, the public works did. Yes. And how much time do we spend on that? I didn't know we had dollars or time allotted for that at this point. Uh, we used materials on hand, stone dust from a previous project. So we didn't really put much in the way of materials into it. What about I the paving? Was that paving? our guys? There was some paving on the rail trail. Was that state or was that us? No, we didn't do any paving on the rail trail. All okay. we did was put down a little gravel, a little stone dust, and then flattened it off with the roller or flattened it off with the uh, uh, compactor. Okay. So the other work that was done up there was state, state stuff? Um, I'm not sure what paving work you're referring to. I guess there were some transitions that were done. Uh, they were not paved. They were just, so what's happened is over time, there's been erosion right where the bridge and the trail come together yeah um, so there's a drop off from the wood structure to uh, the okay. us trail so all we did was and we do this practically every year or every other year we just add more material and flatten it back out so it's safer to ride on okay all right um i also have a couple questions I, unfortunately sherry's not on here but i'm hoping that given that you probably signed them you may know what they're for um we had a check for M and G uh, masonry. Yep. What was that, that for? That was pouring a new slab in the public works building. Okay. Where was the slab poured for? Uh, I, it I was, didn't know we had a project going on down there. So. Yeah, we did. Well, what we looked at is where we park machinery and how easy it is to get equipment in and out of there. Yep. And there was one area that's, if you go in the back door, it's on the right-hand side. Yep. Um, and the slab was recessed about six inches. Um, and uh, there was a drain there that was screwed up. So we had MG, had come, MG in come in and in pour a level slab there. Okay. Did we, was that something that was, that was bid out or no? I don't nope. remember that. It was not bid out. Okay. Um, and Callback Design did some work as well? Uh, Callback did the... Veterans Park. The Veterans Park, the connection to the well and the drain back system and the 
uh, what do you call the no reverse valve? Sorry, I'm losing my mind here. Yeah. Um, that was part of what was presented last month for okay. the fees for the veterans park. The blowback valve. Yep. How much was the slab, Eric? So yeah. you know, where was that paid from? That slab was money came from where? Probably maintenance. I think that was maintenance and public works. How much was it? Uh, it was. Uh, hmm. Think we separated Remember? labor and materials. Um, trying to think, I think the concrete was about two thousand bucks, and I think the labor was somewhere in that same ballpark. So two thousand dollars. So that was under twenty yards. That was like what fifteen yards. Um, uh, in that ballpark, because it was two trucks, two trucks okay. worth. Yeah, there was, and there was a repair spot in the back also. So they did two separate slabs, but one was a small slab in the back. I, 14, I just fourteen oh. yards, Adrian. Fourteen. Okay, that's okay. I'm just. I was only questioning it because I thought we had had got. Pretty good prices from the guy that did the ones down at the um, uh, transfer station, and I, I'm just surprised that we're you know we're not bidding out at least getting prices from more than one person. That's all. And so, Eric, why why didn't you get bids on that? Honestly, they came to me and said, hey, I want to pour this pad back here. I got MG lined up to do it. That's not, um, how we, that's not how we do work here, though. That's how we got in trouble. Not our administration, but the previous administrations have had issues in the past that it just doesn't look good, you know. So in the future, Eric, just on something like that, because that was $4,000. It's not an inordinate amount, and I'm sure the work is fine. But I'm not questioning the work. I'm just questioning how we're doing it. That's all. I understand what you're doing. So it would it would help us all if we could sit there and, and get you know two quick quotes to see. Yeah, I, I'm not suggesting that you go out and do a formal bid on everything, but at least just make a couple phone calls so we're covered. So if somebody asks, we can say we legitimately talked to at least two or three people. You know, that's all. Okay. All right. Any other? Uh, Eric, I'll, I'll ask, and it sounds like in reading your report that the, the, um, the area in the basement with the oil tank and all of that stuff is still uh, up in the air. Do you have a timing on that? I do not. I do not. Okay. All right. Did you get any prices for the tanks yet? You know, neither... None of the three vendors I have asked for that have come back to me with an actual bid yet, which is slightly an annoyance of mine, but that's life. Hey, Eric, as a suggestion to make it easier going forward on like slab projects like this, maybe it's, you know, we, we went out and we tried to get, and I don't know how far along we actually have gotten with, you know, trying to find somebody that does electrical, somebody does construction so that we have that on-call type person for small projects. Maybe we need to do the same thing for concrete, for foundations and floors that we, you know, somebody that's gonna do, whether it's, um, you know, concrete pier or somebody that's gonna do slab work, that we have somebody that we can, we know they charge 50 or hundred dollars, you know, um, a yard, you know. All right, um, any other questions for Eric? Okay, we'll move on to nine, old business. Um, discuss and act upon the following, the Veterans Monument Park upgrades. Uh, Jerry Wright gave us his presentation during public speak, he's, he's no longer with us. Scott, do you have any other issues you he's wanna here. address with him? Jerry's oh. still here. I missed him. Oh, where, missed him. Hi, Jeff. Okay. Oh, hey. sorry, you're, you're over there. 
Um, do you have anything else that you want to add besides what you talked to us about in public speak? Okay. Uh, I hope you got the letter that I did up that showed what, what the cost is going to be for everything. And of course, that seems to change with the uh, with the uh, availability of getting product. And so right now, I'm sitting here on about 90 sole brick that we can't install in the third walkway because we cannot buy the gray border brick. We got to put the gray border brick in before we put the brick that's sold in. So this has all been put off until spring, which is fine. I did talk to the, the Battlefield Cross people out in, in, uh, in Minnesota th uh, this morning and uh, the Battlefield Cross has been put together. It hasn't been welded yet. And they're gonna put that on the back burner until we can get the granite. The reason I went with them to get the granite is that I wanted to drive to Minnesota to pick up the Battlefield Cross to make sure that it's what we had ordered rather than pay for it and get it here and find out that it isn't. So why not get the granite at the same time? So it was $9,000. We did some adjustment to the size of the granite piece. Uh, we brought it down a little bit. <clears throat> We're only putting one flat side on for the uh, plaque, the bronze plaque to tell the, the story of the Battlefield Cross instead of four. So we're down to around $5,600. Um, he's willing to drill the holes in it for us. He's willing to, to drill the holes in for the, uh, the bronze uh, plaque. And so when I pick it up, unfortunately, my half ton truck will not handle the uh, weight of this block. It's about 30, Four to 3,500 pounds. And uh, so I'll be taking out a trailer to bring it back. Uh, he said it'll probably be later in the spring, which is good for me because I really don't want to go to Minnesota in February. So, and this all hinges upon everything getting back here is when Ron then can put the, the rest of the walkway in. We have enough money to cover the battlefield cross and, and the, uh, the plaque and the granite in the account at the American Legion in Hebron. So we've got almost $16,000 right now in that account. So we got money in there and money keeps coming in. Uh, we're still selling brick. I've got uh, 10 more to give to Carol Lee to put in next week. And people are calling me all the time to buy more brick. So we're at about 510 brick that we've sold so far. Wow. And uh, we've raised uh, totally somewhere around $50,000 for that park. That's been no cost to the taxpayer uh, or to the town. What they did with the uh, irrigation, thank you, at 73. I was getting a little tired of dragging 100 foot of hose around, as Scott can contain to that. And, uh, but now we've got the nice irrigation in, and having the power in is good. The flagpole bases are in. The flagpoles are supposed to be installed later this week, and that's around 5,300 and change. And we have money in the account for the bricks to pay for that. So uh, the POW monument is uh, in New Hampshire. I have not heard back from them yet as to the status on that. And it's fine if that doesn't come in until late spring, early summer, the base is ready. So it's just a matter of bringing that in gluing it down and it's done. So I'm just waiting on that. That's about $3,500. So I do have a fundraiser set up for February. We do have Highland Park Market. Uh, a friend of mine talked to Molly. She wants to meet with me down to the park and then she's gonna let me know how much Highland Park is willing to donate towards the rest of the monuments. Uh, we do have another fundraiser set up for March and that's out in Newtown. So, and I'm speaking tomorrow in, in, in Waterford and hoping to pick up a couple more brick down there about 8.30 tomorrow morning. And <clears throat> so the other thing was across from, from Monument Lane is that little piece of property that I think would make a good seating area. <clears throat> What's nice about it is, hold on a minute. It's just orange juice, Adrian, it's nothing else. Uh, <laughs> cheers. <laughs> um, is that 
if I could get a little help with the town from that, uh, the Cub Scouts have asked to come and help clear that. And the clearing that means pulling off all the dead branches that are in there, the vines, uh, just clean it up, clean the bank off and give the fern that's in there a chance to grow. And that'll look really nice in the background. The shade trees are nice. I talked to Jay about it. There's one big dead tree that does need to come down. Uh, that needs to be dropped, cut up and hauled to the town dump. So if I could get some help with that and to put a cover over that catch basin so somebody doesn't go tripping off into there and wouldn't hurt to put two new poles in there as well. The other guardrail poles are rotted and they're old. It just doesn't look good. That area there dressed up would be really nice. Once the flagpoles are in, we take a picture of it and we present that to the Hartford Grant. And I'm sure that they'll say that that's fine. At that point there, um, we'll apply for a new grant, which will be to buy five nice benches. And throw three benches on that side and two in the park area. We buy the, the benches with the, the concrete sides and the plastic or the metal bottoms and back, they weigh about 600 pounds. If we go with all concrete, they weigh a thousand pounds a piece. There's nothing worse than sitting on cold concrete to my thinking. Uh, it holds water, you got to clean it up. It's better off to have something that's porous that will clean up. So that would be the next fundraiser that we'll do later on in the year to put those benches in. Mm -hmm. So, Jerry, thank you very much for all of the work you've done on that park. That park looks, park looks fabulous. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're all done with me? Uh, I think we're all done with you. Anyone I have any questions? Yeah, I want to say something. I want to I want to brag a little bit for Jerry because he won't do this. So thank you, Jerry. I know you're you're speaking at different areas and you're busting your butt. So I appreciate that. It looks great. Um, and I want to ask the board and anybody else in this call, if you see a post on Facebook about the bricks, please share the post. So that just uh, helps everybody out and gets the word out. So thank you, Jerry. I appreciate you. Yeah, one more thing. I spoke at West Point last week. Uh, I'm on the committee there for the retirees council at West Point to brief them on Agent Orange and they bought a brick. So I emailed the editor of the, the West Point Academy this morning and say, well, I have one now from the retirees council. How about getting one from West Point Military Academy? And then I'll be going after the Air Force, the Navy, the Marines and like this. So it's nice having bragging rights and, and I have Paula to help me with that. So thank you, Paula. J Jerry, so the, the place that you need help clearing, is that like right behind the mailboxes there directly across from like where the cannon on that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It, and come spring, I'll have that cleaned up really nice. I just need help get that big tree down and come in there with that little excavator that we have that's a godsend to the town and to level that off and loam it and uh and just raise that catch basin up so you don't have to raise the catch basin you just got to put a cover over it right so, so nobody falls into it okay any other questions for jerry no no jerry, jerry you you, if you put together a work party or something to go down there just maybe let us know. We'll try to publicize it for you. No, I'm going to be asking for your guidance and help. So, yes, I will let you know, Adrian, and you can bring your shovel and boots and come down help. I'll bring my tractor down. I ain't, I ain't working that hard. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate your guys' support. I really do. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thanks, Jerry. All right. Uh, 9B. Man. 9B, connectivity grant, construction progress, Eric. We good. I mean, I know we had the there's there's a hold on the sidewalks. Yeah, that that's as far along as it's going to be this year. Other than they still got to put topsoil down in front of Public Works um, on the bank. The rest of the construction will take place next spring. 
Any update on 9C on the policy on the snowplow damage and mailbox replacement? Uh, no, we sent it out, uh, sent it around, published it on social media again. Um, so we've tried to put the word out. It was on the town's website and public works did go along and notify everybody on their plow routes who had a mailbox that needed to be moved. It was in danger of getting hit. Nine D electrical and HVAC upgrades at the town hall. We know they're on hold, so you don't yeah, really need to go on that. Okay. Um, Do we get the I, heater? Is the heater situation parts were on order? Are the, is that being addressed still, or? Yeah, it's being addressed. I don't know that it's been addressed. Frankly, okay. I got to check back in with them. Okay. Wasn't, wasn't that one the damper issue primarily? Yeah, it is, but it's it's uh the damper itself has a little part, a thermal link, and the thermal link blue. So the the little thermal link has to be repaired so the damper will stay open. Because right now it's kind of shut. So do we have someone to fix that? We do. Uh, nine E transfer station. Um, the only thing I wanted to say was I had hoped we'd have the quotes by now for the overhead door. We do not. So I don't have any update with that. Okay. And then as far as the shed, I know we had the one quote from, um, uh, Regan. Um, have we gotten any other quotes on that? Uh, no, but it sounds like you guys have decided you're not going to do it anyway. So I wouldn't be looking at getting other quotes for that. I mean, I thought the consensus of the board was you were just going to transfer that cart function to the brown building and put the tires in the blue building and call it a day. Is that accurate? Jeff shaking his head. Scott, you good? Um. I'm not really in favor of opening the door every time somebody needs to put a tire in there myself, but I'm only one. Well, how many tires? How many tires are we are we talking a month? I can't give you a tire count. I'm just saying if if we're if we're only talking, they open it, you know, <coughs> three times a day. I don't see what the big deal is. Especially if they have an opener and they had they can control it from up above. Yeah. Yeah. I guess if it's three times, a, uh, you know, that's six times a week, then that, I, I don't have a problem with that really. My, my thought was the person that wants to leave the tire can go show Dom, say, I got this tire I got to get rid of, or Steve, and, and then they can just open the door. They go down and put the tire in and they close the door. Right. Yeah. That way we don't have people just dropping things off with rims on them. And how often, how often are those tires picked up, Eric? You know? Um, I think I see a bill for that, like, probably five or six times a year. So I'm guessing every so, two months. Yeah. Maybe just because we all like data and more data, the better. Um, look at the last bill for them and tell us the number of tires. Actually, the last two bills. So then we can give a, an appropriate date range. Okay. Um, so 9F, Veterans Memorial Field, Surge Suppression, Field Maintenance Services. Jeff Murray got, you know, worked tirelessly on getting all the information that we needed on the surge suppression, bought all the parts, and I think he gave them to Lenco. I think Rick went and picked them up, all the stuff up there. So we have to put some time together to get down there, and uh, and Rick's trying to figure out what he needs to for electrical parts to hook it all up, and then he's going to let us all know we're going to go down and install it. Right, Jeff. Hey, Jeff Murray, yes. You're putting the you're putting the warranty on that. Um, <laughs> they're they're guaranteed. Um, and you know we're protecting everything, especially even the valves. The individual valves are getting protected. The uh, pressure transmitter on the well pumps getting protected, and we're protecting the pump on both ends, and the and the irrigation controller. So we're, it's pretty uh, pretty comprehensive approach we're taking this time. Yeah, very good. Excellent work. Yeah, it'll finally right. be a flawless system down there. 
field maintenance services, are we okay with the, was Hebron okay with the transfer from their services to um, Mr. Galarco? That is a good question. And I will totally admit I dropped the ball on that. It happens. I meant to reach out to- uh, Since uh, field maintenance occur until March or you, April, figure that out. Did you sign that contract, Eric? Nope. Okay. I haven't signed any contract for that. <laughs> okay. Put that so on your list. Let's find out about that for next meeting. And then uh, 10 new business discuss and act upon the town COVID status and position. Um, all the data that Eric has shared with us shows increasing COVID count in town. It's at 53 per 100,000 right now. So we've had an uptick in COVID cases. We just need to be concerned about it. Uh, I, I agree with the group that we want to try not to uh, sit there and uh, minimize activities. It's a, an issue that people need to uh, make their own decisions, but we do need to really be enforcing all indoor uh, mask mandates within town buildings. And um, we as a board should probably uh, discuss a little bit right now about having in public in person meetings that are going on. I mean, we have our meeting on zoom. Uh, I know that there's some of the committees and some of the uh, boards that have in person meetings. Just throwing it out there. You know, we need to require that they wear masks, but should we just try to take all of our meetings back to a virtual setting. Anybody? No? What's, you, okay. what's the saying? Board of Education doing right now? Uh, I believe they're meeting in person, aren't they? Right, mm -hmm. they are, but masks required? Yeah. Yeah, they're doing, a, they're doing um, some people are doing remote. I've been doing remote. Um, it's been intermittent for some of the other members. Um, I have to say, I don't know that we're going to have to do in person for the, the community center stuff. You know, you can't review prints effectively on a Zoom meeting. So I understand I'll work for some things, but I don't think for other things it will. So, right. Yeah, I think our committee, which is it's a small organization that we're, we're, you know, we're reviewing the prints. This is more of a public forum, which I think the Zoom is better because um, it allows people that might be afraid or a little bit nervous oh. to go to. Right. No, I, I agree. I'm just saying, I don't think we want to make it across the board. Yeah, I think it, yeah, individual boards, let, I think we can let them decide what they feel is appropriate. Okay. All right, so that's that. Uh, can it be budget schedule? Um, just for one, just if we back up, what are we, um, I mean, oh, there was some discussion about the senior activities. Um, what's our position on that? Well, Sounds think, like uh, the seniors don't have anything till January anyway, so. Well, they have a, uh, I was told they have a Christmas luncheon coming up. Oh, on the 17th, okay. I believe. I thought Kathy Plazi told us she canceled. And they also have What's a movie night. Canceled? They also have a movie, I believe. I just want to make sure, give them direction. It's been canceled, yes. yeah. Okay. I just don't want uh, seniors to think that the Board of Selectmen are driving this because I feel they should be able to meet in person if they so wish or desire to. They're just not going to meet for the rest of uh, December and they, they want to see what happens in January. Okay. All right. I just, I just want them to make up their own minds. They did. Okay. Well, Jeff, I mean, we're almost seniors. We got to vote here soon, so. <laughs> I'm getting AARP stuff, so I'm getting close. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, I'm there in another couple months. McGuire, how does that feel anyways? Do we have to sign up anywhere? Or? They automatically sign you up, Adrian. They oh, just keep saying. Good to know. <laughs> uh, let's move on to uh, the budget schedule. Um, let's uh, sit there and... Uh, 
Eric, when are you going to be prepared to have first meeting? And then we can figure out schedules after that. So I sent you a, I sent all the boards a proposed schedule. Uh, let's see. Is it on? Amanda, is that on the, in the packet? I don't think I, didn't I saw it. it. Okay. I sent that to you all about uh, three weeks ago, a proposed schedule. I'm sorry. I don't have a copy with me because I'm at home. I'm not at work. Um, I will resend that out to you tomorrow. Okay. So when do you think you'll have information ready for us to meet? I mean, just give us a ballpark beginning of January, like after yeah. January. Beginning of January, first week of January. Yeah. He sent it out on 11, 12. Okay. So as a board, do we want to start scheduling meetings for right after our January meeting? What would we choose to do? I think that's smart. Okay. So um, it's, it's, uh, he's got January 3rd deadline to return to complete budgets to finance office. January 17th, we did distribute draft budget. Um, January and February budget hearings on individual budgets, January 28th, 2022, distribute budget workbooks as approved by Board of Selectmen to Board of Finance. Okay. So we don't, you didn't have dates for, for January, February, but you do have a date for us to get started, which would be really uh, January 17th. Okay, so let's sit there and put that on the calendar. So we should be looking for those to be distributed to us on that day. When do we want to do our first meeting from there, I guess? Hmm. Well, our meeting, let's go this way. Our January meeting, I believe, is the 10th. So at the 10th, let's put out our schedule at that meeting. You want to set it then? Yep. Everybody in agreement? That's fine. Good. All right, let's move on. So uh, town, uh, 10 C, town-wide Christmas caroling. Paula. Okay. December 18th, starting at four o'clock, we've got our four stops. We have the firehouse participating, the board of selectmen, the PTA and Alpoa. The rec commission is, go is going to be having um, some hot cocoa and cookies at stop number one at the town hall AES and then stop number four at Veterans Fields. Um, we're decorating tomorrow our trailer. Adrian and I are working on that. It's gonna be fun. I hope everybody comes and participates. Um, what else? Four oh, I four yep. to when? Um, no, I, we're going to be done by six. Yeah, six the latest. It's going to be, it's it's four stops. We're not doing like we did last yeah, year. Yeah, so the first the first stop really actually happens before we really take off because we're going to be right there at the <coughs> at the school in the school parking lot there, and then uh, we're doing Island Street, like what four twenty, four twenty eight, like four twenty eight, and then and then the third stop is going to be over at the uh, over at the park, so. So I would encourage uh, Scott, if you want to ask your better half and Mr. McGuire, if you would do the same, come on, bring the spouses out. Let's do some caroling. Let's fill up that trailer. <laughs> Jeff, you know, you want to. He's, he's not available. Jeff. He had oh, the little Mr. white McGuire. ball down in Florida. <laughs> yeah. But Mr. But Mr. McGuire is supposed to be there. He could ask his better half. Yeah. Mr. <laughs> I know. I, I know. I know you want to bring your, your wife. No, I will ask. That doesn't ask. mean that I'm going to the answer that you guys would like, but I will ask. Okay. We can have, we can have Paula reach out to her if you want. She is very and, persuasive. And Mr. Murray, enjoy the golf balls in Florida. Right? Watch, out, watch out for the alligators. Scott, don't forget to ask your, your wife, too. 
I've got a question, Scott. So at the field, I texted you about this. I, I wanted to bring a pop-up down for the rec commissions and then we're gonna put lights on the pop-up yeah. so there's a little bit of lighting down there. Where is Where can they plug in for the, the electric? power is at the back of the field. Okay. So if I'm looking at the fence, that back fence, where where is the the outlet? Halfway, you know, where are the control panel? It's it's a hundred feet off of the road there. Okay, and um, there's lights down there. Do they just come on, or how how do the lights come on? No, they, yeah, there's there's field lights. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go down, Paul, and turn the power back on and check that for you and I will get back to you. Okay, yeah, let me know if you're power's ask. off. I just wanna make sure that we can turn on just some of those outlets down there. And you're gonna ask your wife about caroling while you're at it, right? I will, Adrian, absolutely. Oh my gosh, wow. <laughs> I'm gonna okay. ask, just like Jeff's gonna ask, that's, you know. That's right. all we can do, Scott. That's all we can do. <laughs> that's all yeah. we can do. Okay, let me know, Scott, because the rec commission, they're having a meeting tomorrow. I know you're not going to get down there tomorrow, but I just was going to talk to them and say that was option A. Option B is I've got a suitcase generator and we can bring that down there for them. So Yeah, there's power down there. I just, I've got to make sure that it's going to turn on to some outlets. Yeah, there. just so that we've got some sort of lighting if people are walking around. I just didn't want anybody to get hurt when they're walking um, around and and... You know, right. they're going to be watching us from the road, but if they're eating and hanging out before we get there, it might be a little too dark. Mm -hmm. I have some big lighting that we could pop, put down there also, I think. Okay. Like some spotlights? Yeah. Yeah. That, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay. That's all I've got. Um, unless you have something else, Adrian. Nope. All right, 10D, Formation of Museum of Andover History Committee. Okay, that's me again. Um, I've been talking to Kathy DeRosia, and she, her and I have been talking about getting a committee together for the museum, and the committee would be interested in doing some upgrades and looking into some grants for the museum. So... I know that um, some of the siding needs to be worked on and maybe win new windows. So she said she would be willing to be on this committee and get some more members. And she had some people in mind that she was gonna talk to. So I just wanted to bring that up tonight to the board. And um, I'm in, very in favor of this. And if, there, if we've got people that are interested in doing it, then that's, that's great. So what's, What's everybody's thoughts? I think it's a great idea. I think that's a wonderful idea, Paula. Okay. That's how things get done in Andover, volunteers. All right. So do we need to make a motion or anything or do I just go back to her and say, start gathering, gathering the troops? What do we need to do from here? Get some names. Get some names, and then we'll uh, vote on it. Yeah. I mean, the hardest thing we have right now is we have so many different positions open. You know, putting another one out there, I don't know, is going to help. Well, I'm being positive, and I'm saying that it's going to be great. And Kathy is very enthusiastic, and I even talked to Mr. Yeomans, and he's excited about it. So I'm going to say... The committee is going to be formed and they're going to do an awesome job. So I, I think they will. Okay. Excellent. Volunteers, right, Scott? That's it. Yeah. Okay. So now we're moving on to our uh, 10E pedestrian safety initiative. This came from me and this came from a post that was on Facebook probably three to four weeks ago from Karen Zito um, about some traffic issues that she had run into with some uh, individuals in cars. Um, this is, it, and it kind of piggybacks what I've been uh, noticing in the last few months when we turn the clocks back is that people aren't, you know, we, we've done all this work around the lake to try to improve 
speeding and, and vehicle, you know, uh, safety, but we really haven't focused on the pedestrian side of it. And I've been running a lot around the lake and I've noticed a lot of people are wearing dark clothing. Um, they're not blending, they're blending into the environment. And, you know, it's, it's, it's very hard to see people when we don't have any lights around most of our roads. I mean, I was coming home tonight and I had one of my neighbors was walking and I could barely see her. I got about 20 feet away from her before I actually saw her in the road. Um, I put a question out on the, on the Andover Support Network site, just asking people, you know, if you were provided a vest, would you wear it? And overwhelmingly, I got a lot of positive responses. So this is something I like to ask the board. Would this be something we'd want to pursue? Maybe purchase a few vests and keep them at the town hall, maybe give some to the trooper that he could give out if he saw people walking around the lake, just to create a little bit more visibility for our pedestrians. Um, I looked into them, they're three to five dollars a piece. Um, I still have some money left over from the events that I put on that were supposed to be put into the Rec Commission budget. This may be something that the Rec Commission can do because the races that I put on, I wanted some of this money to go to recreational uses. And I think getting people out walking safely is a good recreational use of that money. So, you know, I'm talking a couple hundred dollars here just to see if, if, if we can get people to get out there a little bit more visible. Um, like Karen, I see Karen Zito. She walks in my neighborhood all the time and she wears a highly reflective vest. And I'll see her 50, 100 yards away at night. She sticks out like, a, you know, she sticks right out. I can see her right away. And other people I can't. Um, there's a group that walks down a Hendy that wears yellow vests and you can see them a mile away. Just, I mean, I can be down at the bottom of Hendy and I'll see them walking at the bridge. They stick out that much. So I think it's a great idea, Jeff. It's just, I, you know, if you just get them at the town, and... keep them at the town hall. Yeah. If wants one, they can have one and we give some to the trooper. If the trooper sees somebody yeah. down walking at the lake, right. gives one out and say, hey, you know, we want to just increase mystery and safety. Good idea. It's, it's a relatively inexpensive thing we could do that would have a bigger impact that I think than just trying to, we've been focused on the traffic so much. Maybe we work the other side and just try to get the pedestrians a little bit more visible too. So I just, I would just want to put it out there and see what everybody thought of it, about it. Great idea. Jeff. Runners, you think they are out there are Jeff. What's that? How many runners do you think there are 50, a hundred? There's just walkers. Anybody that's using the, the roads around the lake or even around the town, just if they, they want to get a free vest, they, they can just go to the town hall. Maybe Carol keeps them and just give them out free of charge. We get we buy 20 or so and just see how it goes. And if you know, yeah. if they're gone, we buy more. So it's just great. It's a great idea. OK, well, I'll, I'll contact Carol and see what she thinks and see if we can get something going and see if we can I can get some I'll put some. I'll give her some part number, you know, some numbers of vests that are out there and see if we can get them ordered and then we'll put it out there and see if anybody grabs them. Excellent. Uh, so 10F VoIP system. I know Eric has multiple quotes out there. Eric, have we made any decisions on that? No, there's one more I'm still waiting on. It's not the contractor's fault. I've blown them off twice because I was too sick to meet with them. So by... So by next meeting, I will have a comprehensive, you know, set up for you uh, and a decision can be made. Okay. Uh, 11, approval of uh, meeting minutes for Monday, November 8th, 2021. Anybody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the Monday, November 8th, 2021 regular minute meeting. Minute meeting minutes. Second. Second. <coughs> Jeff, you in? You out? Okay, good. Excellent. All right. He's ordering vest. He's ordering vest. <laughs> Twelve finance department reports. Uh, does anyone want to make any comments related to the finance reports presented? I thought we were getting a percentage column. I also thought we were getting an Excel spreadsheet. Didn't get either. That's why I'm asking. I know. I'm with you. <clears throat> um, okay. I also, um, I'd like to see detail sheets so we can understand some of these numbers because, you know, like the rec commission, there's a $17,000 number in there. I'm assuming it's a grant, but we need to understand what that is. Um, it'd be nice to see 
like we got the we got the thing from Public Works to to show us where we're up to right now. We should be getting those detail sheets from from other departments as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe next meeting we can have Sherry, uh, or we can talk to Sherry before the meeting and try to get that information. I mean, uh, we. Well, if they're, set, if they're set up in Edmonds, right? If they're set up in Edmonds, we should also be talking to her about whether or not the one of the whole reasons of going to Edmonds was that we were supposed to be able to have access to these to these funds to be able to see the detail lines, right? So we should be able to go in and look at the fund for road work, look at the fund for you know tar money, and be able to see what the expenses were and where they you know where they came from. That was the whole point: is to have or to finance the board of selectmen and be able to have access, not editing, but visual access. So I'd like I to see that. Yeah, that rec commission, that, I mean, I know they, well, I, I actually talked to Carol on Saturday. I don't think she deposited any of the money for uh, youth basketball. So I don't know what that $17,000 is. Eric, any idea? I'm pretty sure that's a grant that came in last summer to cover the youth recreation league stuff, I think, but I'm not positive. To cover youth recreation league? Yes, okay. the money for the summer camp program, the grant that they got last year for the summer program. For like summer cool, is that? Correct. Okay. But right, yeah. don't quote me on that. I think that's the answer, but I could be wrong. So it was, did, did you, were you able to talk to Sherry at all today? I did have a conversation with Sherry today. Okay. Is, was she not able to make it tonight for some specific reason or? She's at the dentist. Oh. She has a tooth problem. That's not good. Um, I just, I have one question on one of the, the expenditures to Linko. Um, it's just a strange amount. It's $9,999.99. Right. So you want to know why it's nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents, right? <laughs> Basically, because I told Lenko that I thought the town could swallow paying about ten thousand for it, and he comped us the rest. The total bill was around twenty two thousand dollars. Okay, he charged I was, us. I was just, I was just curious. It was just seemed like a, it just seemed kind of an arbitrary number. So. Yes, well. correct. He's okay. been doing he's been doing a lot for the town. Oh, I know he has. But I just, have, I have just we thought about is there some way that we could recognize a lot of these people? I mean, we've got Lanco and and you know Jerry Wright, and we have, we have a lot of volunteers doing a, some really big work for the town. We're, we're supposed to be writing up letters. Yeah, Amanda and I have actually talked about that. I should have had it done by now. I have not. But we're going to write a nice letter, thank you letter, to all the contractors that have donated their time and efforts to the museum project, because there are a lot of them. Yeah. Put, put, put that on your list. It is on my list. My yeah, suggestion, I, can, can we somehow include that into the walk with the bricks? Especially for the park? Like one section, you know, thanks to these thanks to these people to you know for their efforts. Let's let's buy them bricks. That's what I'm I thinking. Mean, I don't know if it's appropriate to do bricks, but I, I'd be I'd be akin to doing, you know, maybe a Why brass not? plaque because uh, the, the the walkway is is to honor veterans. Yep. Some something in that area, maybe just well, with their names on the, it. There's one walkway for supporters of the. Yeah, veterans. that's what I'm thinking. So you want to put it in there. So why wouldn't you want to do that for the those supporters? I, I didn't realize you had another um, one for just supporters. I haven't been no, down there since you, know you guys finished it. So. I, I agree. I agree with Adrian. I'm thinking about it now that we should find a place and we should um, we should pay for a plaque for all the people who help build that. Yeah, just give the you know the town of Andover wishes to recognize the following community members for their generous and continuous support in this. <laughs> No, yeah. yeah. I, I agree with that. So let's Talk let's me. get a let's get a list of all the people that should be recognized and bring it back and let's try to get something 
Yeah, we'll talk to Jerry. We'll talk to Jerry about where 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 he might envision that as being a good spot, and then we'll figure out what to put and go from there. Might have to go on that hillside under that nice shade tree on a park bench. Actually, that's not a bad idea. I know I'm creative like that. Now you're talking. Or put the plaques on the bench, just like when people buy benches. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Um, anything else about the finance? I mean. Listen, this. We we're supposed to get checks. We we're supposed to get a lot of different things. I, I we got the it. checks. We got the check really? register. So, step one. Huh? I missed that. Well, it God, came in today. It, it came in today, and I. At four o'clock, by the way. So <laughs> I I just want to globally say whatever we need for these meetings. And I know sometimes Eric gets things last minute during the day, but they got to come. It's got to come in like Friday. I, <laughs> we're all work. We're all working. We're doing stuff. And we so can't do a Monday we, meeting and be expect to be checking our email at no. five o'clock, trying to eat a meal. And well, some of us aren't. Trip. Some of us aren't even done with work at five o'clock, or we're on the road or something. So, this, I, this is really frustrating if if i if i did that in my job i support my boss or whoever and i get things sent you know on time and i know that reminders go out but if it's i don't know if it has to come from us then maybe it has to come from us i'll send an email out to everybody and say please get everything in by this date because well, well given given the fact that it's not like it's something that doesn't we're not asking to happen every month we are and the fact that there's a whole month to get that registered to us. If it, it doesn't matter when in the month it happens, if it happens at the same point in every month, then we're, we're covered, right? Right. So right. if it happens a week before, we're good. Yeah, and I, I'm just saying this globally. It's just, it, it's very frustrating when I have to make a decision on something I haven't read or I'm trying to read during a meeting. It's very, <clears throat> it's very frustrating and I, you know, I just want to make an educated decision, and I know everybody else does too. How did Jay Tuttle make up such a nice, comprehensive report? He sent it today because I spoke to him. I haven't read it. Anybody? You read it? I read it. I read it. Wow, you guys are good. Uh, I work till 5 30, yeah. 6 o'clock. I'm with Paula. Yeah. Trying to keep my boss happy. Um, he had a, a very good report. All right. So can we just, we, we need to have on the agenda for next month, what's going on with Edmonds and whether or not we're going to be able to get access. And I know we're getting ready for budget, but that's the whole point. We're supposed to have this up and running and working for budget, you know? Yeah, you would think that right? Jeff or Adrian or Jeff or Paul or somebody could just open up Edmonds and, share it with everyone yeah i would think that that should be able to be done that was the whole point of paying 30 exactly thirty eight thousand dollars wasn't it instead of having you know instead of having quickbooks exactly pop it open jeff <laughs> mcguire can open it up Jeff's it. <laughs> eric are we yeah. reconciling and reconcile it and right in front of us no. eric are we reconciling Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, I'm asking the question. I'm not kidding. No, I'm not either. It's it's no, why Scott, that's not Eric, doable. Eric, are we reconciled? We are reconciled. Excellent. That's first step. Okay, so let's get Sherry on. Uh, we'll put Sherry at the top of our uh, agenda next week. Wasn't that next that, that software was thirty five thousand dollars, wasn't it? Almost forty. Forty thousand dollars. Right. <laughs> yeah, we bought. I can't remember how much QuickBook was. I think it was maybe a tenth of that. Six, six thousand or five thousand or something. Yeah. Are you kidding? I don't know why Jeff wouldn't let us go with QuickBooks. It's really. <laughs> if I remember correct, if I remember, I was, I was on the losing side of that vote, Mister Man. He was fighting for it. Yeah. Oh, please let's boy. not go there, please. <laughs> I, I'll have to tell all of you, I have lost some votes. I have. I, I, I haven't been on the winning side of every argument. And I've been right on all of them, but that's okay. 
<laughs> oh wait, that, he he made me do a ho ho ho. Yeah, see, I got you. Okay, so let's keep going. Department report. Uh, well, let's see the te- the budget appropriations. There weren't any. I didn't see any over expenditure requests. Um, the tax collector's report is in there. We collected about three hundred fifty thousand dollars this month. Uh, there were two refunds of excess payments, Toyota Lease Trust and an Armstrong Linda one. You know, the ones that I always tell you, and I, I sit there and I just, I say this to everybody because it really does offend me is when you look at the, uh, ta- the assessor's report and you look at all of the adjustments that are made to people's taxes, you know, we only vote on the ones that we have to issue cash back for but we never have to vote on all of these that are given for other reasons. And they're all, most of them are just normal reasons they should be given, but you know, we don't even talk about the BAA. I'm sure we will eventually, but moving on. (laughs) Yeah, moving on. I got outvoted again. Um, Okay. Yeah, you got eight minutes and then I, got stuff to do so let's move let's chuck you this along oh uh, any other report questions anybody um there was a there was a miscalculation in the i just want to point out in the packet for the refund request the total was wrong it should be 952 dollars 95 cents last month was listed at 6k I was, I just got a message sent to me. Yes. Uh, let's see. I was wondering, cause you're not usually that good at math, Paula. $52 and 95 wow. cents. Hey, hey, by the way, there's grass growing somewhere, Mr. Manuel. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm on that, I'm on that. All right, be quiet, you have seven more minutes. All right, so are we going to vote on those refunds? Anybody want to make a, a, a motion on those? Because I don't really need to sign them if you don't want to vote. I'm good. Um, I guess I should make the motion since I have the correct number here. Unless Adrian is a, you know, he claims to be such a numbers guy. I, I never made that claim. I just said that you weren't. <laughs> oh, now I got to come up with something quick to say on the spot here. Okay, I make a motion that we refund the requests that are listed here for a total of $952.95. Um, there you go. All right. Uh, further discussion, none. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, there are other reports that are out there. Uh, any other questions on any of them? Um, did you? Did somebody say that Jay sent something today? I. I didn't get it. It's in the package. He sent a DT. Didn't know. He sent a separate detailed budget report. Can somebody forward that to me? Because I'm looking in my email and I, I don't have that. Did you check your town email, Paul? That I'm looking at it right now, my friend. I <clears throat> uh, came in at three twenty seven. The only thing I have is from Amanda this morning at 11.28 and Sherry Holmes at 3.59. You sent so, it to pking at andover.org. Mm, it's both the andoverct.org. So I didn't get it. Thank you. Yeah, it's andoverct.org. It's pking. Everybody forward it that to her. Did, yeah. you, did you get it, Scott? I did get it, I did. and I re- read it. It was a very nice report. Paula. So happy that we got Jay. Well, did you get it? I got I'm it from right now. Give me a yeah. second for. Her. I just got it. Thank you. I already sent it to him. Every once in a while, I look at my emails. Um, wow. So, um, if we can uh, move on, does anyone have any other questions? Of reports, any of the reports, any of the questions? Oh, and by the way, in the assessor's report, there was a $23,000 reduction in the total assessed value. Love that. Okay. 
correspondence, anything, anybody? No? All right, uh, public speak, let's go. Do we have anybody? Joanne Ebert. I am all set, thank you. Kurt Dowling. All set, Jeff. Thank you for attending the entire meeting, Kurt. Diane Choquette. I'm all set, thank you. Thank you for attending the entire meeting. We have another person in the yellow flowers, Kimberly Persson. Hello. Nope. Okay, that's fine. And Dennis O'Brien, thank you as always for attending. It's always great to know that your presence is there, even in a phone number that just sits on the screen. Is he awake? He is, he's awake. Are you kidding me? This is this this is like this is like Apple TV for Dennis O'Brien. This is this is all set. This is thank Net you. All right, thank you. This is like Netflix. This is this is humor for him like you wouldn't believe. Okay, so we're all good. Anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Scott, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Great seeing you guys. See you on Saturday. I'm looking forward to it. Not, not this. Yes, this Saturday. See you then. Yes, this Saturday, Paula. Yes. <laughs> did you get? Did you get that email yet? Are you going to be streaming live, Paula? Yeah, hey, yeah. CBC, yes, Elaine, Elaine is going to be bringing a camera over and she said she's going to set a camera up at stop one. So we'll All right, be, I'll uh, watch, I'll watch on the sun porch in my shorts. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow.